My wife and I have been working to put together an online course to help folks study for the technician class the amateur radio license exam. And in developing this course, we found that the test covers a number of topics that would be most easily explained in a video. And we thought that these subjects might also have broader appeal to anyone who's interested in radio or electronics. One of the topics that came up was the relationship between frequency and wavelength. And when we talk about frequency and wavelength, uh, we're talking about two different ways to describe a single property of an electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic waves propagate through three-dimensional space, uh, which is a little tricky to visualize. So let's look at a simplified visualization. We'll show magnitude of the wave on the vertical axis, and we'll show distance on the horizontal axis. Then the wave looks like this. You can see that at a given moment in time, the wave's magnitude has peaks and valleys that repeat periodically across space. The length of distance between these peaks is an important property of the wave, and we call it the wavelength. Now, let's suppose that this wave has a wavelength of 20 meters. And let's imagine another wave with a wavelength of 10 meters. Now we've been talking about these waves at a single moment in time. As time passes, the waves propagate out from their origin at the speed of light, which is about 300 million meters per second. Now we'll show it a little slower here. You can see that the physical location of the peaks and valleys in magnitude move through space over time. Now suppose we imagine how the wave would seem to a measuring device at a fixed point in space. As the wave moves by, the device measures an increasing and decreasing magnitude. Because the speed of the wave is constant and the wavelength is constant, the cycle of magnitude values measured by the device repeats at regular intervals. Now, how frequent these intervals are, we call the frequency. And we measure it by how many times the cycle repeats in one second. We say that a wave that repeats its cycle 10 times per second has a frequency of 10 hertz. So, you can see that frequency and wavelength are really two ways to measure the same property of a wave. And we might choose one or the other depending on which characteristics of the wave we want to talk about. So, to talk about the magnitude of the wave across space at a moment in time, wavelength is convenient. To talk about the magnitude of the wave at a point in space across time, frequency is handier. There are two ways to express the same property. But how do they relate mathematically? If we know one, could we calculate the other? The key is that all electromagnetic waves propagate at the same speed. It doesn't matter the frequency or the amplitude or anything like that. So, we can see that in the time it takes for this wave to complete a few cycles, the other wave, with half the wavelength, completes twice as many. That's the relationship. As wavelength decreases, frequency increases proportionally. We say that they have an inverse relationship. Because of that, if you know one, you can find the other. All you need to know is the speed that electromagnetic waves propagate at, about 300 million meters per second. 
Now, for waves that radio amateurs deal with, it's convenient to talk about frequency as millions of cycles per second, or megahertz. If we do that, it's more convenient to express the speed of light as 300 megameters per second. Then, we can simply divide 300 by the wavelength in meters to find the frequency in megahertz. Or, we can flip it around and we can divide 300 by the frequency in megahertz to get the wavelength in meters. Now let's try it out. Uh, at what frequency uh, would you find the 6 meter amateur radio band? Figure it out, you just take 300, divide that by 6, and we find it'll be around 50 megahertz. Let's do one the other way. What's the wavelength of a wave with a frequency of 144 megahertz? Just divide 300 by 144 and we find it's about 2 meters. As I mentioned earlier, my wife and I have developed an online course to help you study for the Technician Class Amateur Radio License Exam. If you're studying for the test, or if you think you might like to, I do hope you'll check it out at skillman.com. It's fast, effective, and guaranteed. I hope this video has helped explain the relationship between frequency and wavelength. If so, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, check out the comments section down below. I read that, I'll try and get back to you. And if this is the kind of thing you're into, hit that subscribe button.